In this section of the video lecture, we will talk about the movement of ions across this semi permeable bound structure that is a protein, that it will create an electrochemical gradient, and this is called chemiosmosis. I'm going to start showing you a movie about this, and then again, I'm going to highlight important ideas that can be useful for your test. So let's start. Concentration gradients are a key component of the biological world. The potential energy from these gradients is often used to perform biological work. Here we will focus on hydrogen ion concentration gradients. Hydrogen ions are also known as protons. A gradient exists when there is a higher concentration of a molecule in one compartment compared to a neighboring compartment. This animation will demonstrate how the potential energy that results from a hydrogen ion gradient uses ADP and inorganic phosphate, also known as PI, to synthesize ATP. This process involves an enzyme complex called ATP synthase. Gradients and the potential energy they create are key aspects of the biological world. A good example of the use of a gradient occurs in the mitochondria when ATP is synthesized. ATP is synthesized by ATP synthase, a large complex of membrane-bound protein. Here we see ATP synthase, along with other membrane-bound proteins. Notice the large difference in the number of hydrogen ions on the two sides of the membrane. This difference is a hydrogen ion, or proton, concentration gradient. The energy associated with this gradient is used to synthesize ATP from ADP and PI. This occurs at the ATP synthase complex. One hydrogen ion enters the ATP synthase complex from the intermembrane space, and a second hydrogen ion leaves it on the matrix space. The upper part of the ATP synthase complex rotates when a new hydrogen ion enters. Once three protons have entered the matrix space, there is enough energy in the ATP synthase complex to synthesize one ATP. In this way, the energy in the hydrogen ion gradient is used to make ATP. Now let's watch the process again. Notice how the proton enters the ATP synthase and exits into the matrix space. Once three more hydrogen ions have crossed the membrane, another molecule of ATP will be made. In this example, the hydrogen ion gradient is large enough to produce six ATP molecules. Please watch as the remaining ATP molecules are synthesized. The process has now completed, and the result is an equal number of protons on each side of the inner membrane. Without a gradient, there is no more energy available to make ATP. In biological systems, however, a gradient is always maintained. The mitochondrial hydrogen ion gradient is generated as electrons pass through three membrane complexes. That process can be seen in the mitochondrial electron transport chain animation. Okay, now that you watch that video, I want that, as I said before, I'm going to highlight several topics that they can be important. Now we're going to talk about the final process, the process of chemiosmosis. That is the process that produces most of the energy, most of the ATP. And now we can remember all the concepts and the names that we learned in the beginning of this lecture. We remember that there were three main regions in the mitochondria, that it was the intermembrane space, the inner membrane, and here you have the mitochondrial matrix. And here what you see is that there is a lot of protons, and these protons always move from the intermembrane space to the mitochondrial matrix and how they do it through the ATP synthase protein. And while they move, 
they uh, they use a the exergonic flow of what of do you see this how they show in a schematic way those hydrogen protons are producing energy to turn the ADP into ATP this conversion and finally when you take not only hydrogen protons but any ion used to cross a membrane through diffusion this process is called chemiosmosis so let's recap the three concepts that we study in this slide we talk about that the hydrogen ion then flow their concentration gradient back across what they go to the inner membrane and through the ATP synthase and the ATP synthase use the exergonic flow of protons to drive the phosphorylation of ADP to form ATP as I show you here and finally if you remember this process is called chemiosmosis that is the use of energy in this case of protons of hydrogen to a uh, drive the cellular work this is the third important concept that i wanted to tell you today about the process of chemiosmosis as i said before this is the schematic that they show in your textbook but also in your textbook they also show you some computer simulation that allow you to see how the atp synthase three-dimensional structure actually would look like and again this is not going to be in the exam just want to or in the test just want that you see this kind of work so you understand that although this is a drawing this is actually how we predict that it will be so let's start playing this movie Watch a top view of the conformational changes in the ATPase F1 complex during one 360-degree rotation of the stalk. The three A subunits are shown in yellow, the three B subunits in red plus green, and the stalk in blue plus gray. Notice how each rotation consists of three successive 120-degree movements of the stalk, causing large domain shifts in the A and B subunits. Credit. George Oster and Hong Young Wang, University of California, Berkeley. And now I want to remind you of this redox reaction that we studied before, in which you have a reaction, you have two elements, and one become more positive and one become more negative. So one will be oxidized and the other one will be reduced. And what happened during this electron transport change is exactly like that. You take some section of the electrons are going to go and interact with the oxygen and form water and the other section of the redox reaction is this in the redox reaction you're going to have all this accumulation of protons here you have a store energy all this electron transport change as we said it was to store energy so you have now a gradient that is very difficult to produce of ions and they, and they go across this protein they will create this exergonic reaction that it will produce ATP as we said and this is actually we call them as we said before in the class a motive motive proton force why because to emphasize the importance of this of this store energy of the protons to produce energy so to finish this idea of the chemiosmosis that couples the electron transport change to the ATP synthase as, as I said here here you are having and redox reaction and here you have one component of the redox reaction and you have the other component so you have in this intermembrane you have energy stored in the proton gradient across the inner mitochondrial and this one this membrane couples the redox reactions 
of the electron transport change to the ATP synthesis. So here you have one section of the redox reaction and here you will have the other one of the redox reaction that in this case will produce ATP. And this is the first thing that I want that you remember. This cellular respiration is a process that involves redox reaction, as we said. And the second thing that I want that you remember is that this gradient of protons is, is re referred as a proton motive force. And why? Because it's emphasized its capacity to do work. Now I want that we talk about in more detail about the accounting of ATP production by cellular respiration. So we talked that there are two main regions with cell respiration of course one is in the cytoplasm and the other one will be in the mitochondria and while in the cytoplasm you have some ATP as a result of the glycolysis there is not a lot most of the ATP is due to the ATP synthase as a result of the coupling to the electron transport change phosphorylation. And this is the order of the sequence. First, you have glucose here. Second, you will turn, move all this glucose into here, NADH. Then you move this electrons into the electron transport change here mm -hmm. this is the third section and finally as a result of the other section of the result reaction here you had electrons now here you have protons so you're going to have the proton motive force that it will form ATP